And Liberal Democrats leader Sir Ed Davey is coming under mounting pressure for his role in the saga. Davey was Postal Affairs Minister, of course, during the coalition government. And more than 700 post office branch managers were given criminal convictions after faulty accounting software made it appear as though money was missing from their shops. And in fact, they were accused of stealing it. Well, I'm joined now by our political correspondent, Olivia Utley. Olivia, a saga that's been rolling on for years and years and years, and yet it's taken an ITV drama for this to become front page news again. But many, many people were convicted, went to jail. Some sadly have taken their lives. Will they finally get justice? It seems as though now, finally, with public outrage at this enormous pitch, they might finally see justice. As you say, this is a hugely wide-reaching scandal. It has tentacles everywhere and every political party has actually been implicated by it. It began in 1999 under Tony Blair, continued under Gordon Brown, continued under the coalition government where Cameron was the prime minister, but Lib Dem uh, ministers were in charge of post office affairs, including actually Ed Davey, who was post office affairs minister from 2010 to 2012. He's under huge pressure at the moment. He was asked five times for a meeting by Alan Bates, and he said that a meeting would serve no useful purpose. He now says that he did uh, uh, relay Alan Bates's concerns to the post office and the post office lied to him. That's his uh, justification. It'll be really interesting to see if that holds. Meanwhile, of course, we've got the question of when and how those wrongly convicted postmasters are going to see those convictions overturned and get their compensation. We're expecting to hear from Alex Chalk, the Justice Secretary, very soon. He's been talking to ministers over various options that he could take uh, to get that compensation system going again and to get those convictions overturned. One option he is considering, which David Davis has called for, is to exonerate those uh, just over 600 postmasters en masse. As we've talked about, 700, around 700 have been convicted. 93 have already seen their convictions overturned. The rest are still waiting. Could Alex Chalk just uh, make it possible for the, the, the judiciary to overturn all of those convictions at once. Another option, which Alex Chalk is considering, is stripping the post office of its role in prosecutions. The post office, some might say archaically, has the ability to privately prosecute people, and that is how those 700 postmasters were convicted. Could Alex Chalk strip away that ban from the post office and hand it back to the Crown Prosecution Service? That is a, an option seriously being, being considered by government, but would obviously have not on effects. The Crown Prosecution Service is short on resources. There are other cases. Uh, so it, it's unclear whether that's the option that they'll take. What is for certain is that something is going to be done now. This this has reached a fever pitch. A million people have signed mm. a petition calling for Paula, Paula Venels to lose her CBE. And as you say, after 20 years, it has taken this ITV drama, the, it's taken the media getting this right into the public eye for the government to sort of realise the urgency of this situation. And another thing today, Rishi Sunak, of course, said he would strongly support that move for the Honours Forfeiture Committee to consider revoking that CBE. Do you think that will happen or do you think there'll be a full inquiry and this might get brushed off once again? It'll be really interesting to see what happens with that. The Honours Forfeiture Committee get the final decision on this. It is not up to Rishi Sunak, though now he has endorsed them uh, taking that step. They might feel political pressure to do it. A million signatures, that is a lot. That is a decent proportion of the country uh, asking for Paula Venels to get her CBE removed. There is, of course, the option for, for Paula Venels simply to hand her CBE back, something that the postmasters have been calling for for a long time now. My instinct is that eventually Paula Venels, one way or another, will not have her CBE. But it'll be interesting to see how much wrangling we have to get to before we get to that point. OK, Olivia Early, superb as ever. And I'm joined now on the studio by Tim Loughton, who's a Conservative MP for East Worthing and Shoreham. Thanks for joining us, Tim. Now, the next question, of course, is that of compensation. Not the, not the small mm. matter. 150 million quid is the bill thus far. That will surely, surely grow. Lee Anderson, your, your, your deputy chairman, was in the studio earlier. And I said, well, who's going to pay for that? He said, well, maybe the humble taxpayer. I said, is that fair? Why should the taxpayer pick up the bill? Fujitsu, or the company who sold this software now, has been proven to be unfit for purpose. Should they be footing the bill? 
Uh, I think probably yes. I, this whole story stinks. Incredible, the, mm. the scale of uh, abuse that has uh, gone on and those 700 poor postmasters and postmistresses whose lives have been com completely turned upside down and four tragically took their own, their own lives. This is going to involve a substantial amount of uh, uh, compensation. The post office is uh, a national um, industry. It's government owned. That means the taxpayer has to foot the bill ultimately. But you're right. The reason this happened was dodgy software mm. and the people who provided the post office were Fujitsu. So I will be asking serious questions about having Fujitsu's head on the block and what they're going to be um, stumping up to help put this serious tragedy, uh, for some people as it turned out to be, but a, a real scandal, to put it right. And Tim, the government has considerable leverage in this issue because, of course, Fujitsu is still the beneficiary of massive government contracts to this day. Yeah, Fujitsu is, is a major international um, player, a company worth £56 billion, pounds, I, think, uh, I think it is. It makes a lot of its money in the UK and it makes a lot of its money from public contracts as well. So if Fujitsu wants to be considered for future public uh, uh, contracts, then it needs to step up to the plate and put this situation uh, right and the inquiry that's going to happen to all this needs, needs to know why it happened and what culpability can be attached to Fujitsu as well. I think it will be good for Fujitsu before the whole story is completely laid bare to actually come forward and say we are prepared to take some of the blame and we're prepared to put some uh, financial compensation uh, as well. Otherwise it will be the taxpayer picking up an even bigger bill. And Tim, this has hugely captured the public imagination. A million people sign in this signature for th this petition begging upon for Paula Vennels to be stripped mm. of her CBE. What about Ed Davey? You know, he was at the helm at the time under the coalition government, repeatedly turned down meetings with Mr Bates, Alan Bates. Um, here's a guy who's very trigger happy when it comes to demanding sure. the resignations of others 31 times. In fact, should Mr Davey be considering his position? Well, it's Sir Ed Davey, of course, somebody else who's had an honour since mm. uh, uh, his time in, uh, in office. And frankly, Ed Davey's been hoist by his own uh, petard. He's very quick to throw mud around, as lots of his uh, colleagues are very quick to call for uh, resignations. But it was on his watch that Alan Bates, who comes out as a real hero of all of this, came to his department, said we need to uh, get this uh, sorted, and was effectively um, swept aside. His excuses about, oh, I was lied to by the post office. I was a minister in the coalition government at the same time as uh, Ed Davey in a different uh, department. And when there were things that didn't sound right to me, I didn't just sweep it under the carpet. I actually went to see the people responsible. I went out of the department. I would have gone to uh, speak to actual sub postmasters and get a bigger story. I was responsible for children's social care. I went to speak to social workers. I went to speak to uh, children in care to get the real uh, story. There's no excuse for what happened there. There are other Liberal Democrats actually running the business department. Vince Cable was a Secretary of, uh, uh, of State for uh, a trade where the department is Norman Lamb, another Liberal Minister, Joe Swinson. Uh, so actually they've got a lot of questions to answer uh, as, uh, as well. And for once they're going to have to answer the questions rather than raise some rather dodgy questions and hell mud as they had in, in the past. Do you think this is going to happen though? Um, Ed Davey has been on the telly today, so it wasn't it nothing to do with me. I mean, I was, I was, I was told dodgy information by the post office they were they lied to me he, he, he's he's rather slippery but again well, you know he accuses people of being slippery all the time but will he actually stand up and take this one so ed davy was the minister responsible for the post office the buck stops with the minister frankly it's a publicly owned institution he certainly should have been answering more questions rather than say to Mr Bates, don't call us, we'll call you, as effectively seems to have happened. All of this needs to come out because this has really struck mm -hmm. the, the imagination of the British public, real concern at the way this uh, has happened. Few people come out of this well. Actually, Kevin Hollenrake, the post office minister um, now, who raised this when he was a shadow minister uh, before Conservative MPs George Younger uh, raised it, uh, some uh, Labour lords raised it uh, as well. Very few people otherwise come out of this uh, well. They're absolutely absolutely needs to be full transparency. The whole thing needs to be laid bare. Heads must uh, roll and compensation needs to be paid and the whole bill should not end up with the, uh, uh, with the taxpayer. And it needs to be done absolutely urgently. 700 people whose lives have been uh, ruined, only a handful have had their compensation. The other 600 still have these convictions uh, over their head. Uh, and I hope the government and looks as they will, will, ministers meeting now, to see how we can expedite 
uh, clearing their names. And it would seem like a rather easy political win for Rishi Sunak. He's already saying he will strongly support stripping this um, CBE away. But with a million people backing this, and it's just completely captured the public imagination, surely Rishi... Um, palming this off, as it were, onto Ed Davey at the same time as saying we demand justice for the post office affected, Rishi should throw his weight behind this and try and get resolution and get justice. Sure, and, and that's why today Alex uh, Chalk, the uh, Justice uh, Secretary, and Kevin Hunwright, the, uh, the post office minister, have got together to see how we can urgently expedite this to make sure that those still with criminal convictions, whether we can do it in one fell, fell soup, I'm not a, a lawyer, but how they can be absolutely exonerated, their names uh, cleared and very publicly an apology to them as well and compensation paid because many of them lost their livelihoods, their pension, nothing else to go with it. That money needs to be made available absolutely um, urgently. And then some serious questions as to who was really responsible, who turned the other way, who didn't ask the right uh, questions, and why the software failed and what the company who provided it are going to do to make amends. Superb. Tim Lauter, thank you very much for joining us on the show. Tim, of course, is the Conservative MP for East Worthing and Shoreham. Thank you very much for joining us today.